Hi, Russell with SP, and in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the Shocker Era. What we're specifically going to be doing is looking at the differences between the Shocker Era and the outgoing Shocker Amp. Now, it should be stated that the Shocker Amp was an amazing platform. Uh, we see the same operating pressure in the era at 110 PSI. We see the same efficiency at about 12 tubes in a loader on a 77 in good conditions. We see the same battery efficiency because we're using largely the same electronics. We're gonna say uh, very similar consistency or the, over the chronograph because we're using the same regulator internals. Uh, but we are going to see some advancements in sound signature as well as paint handling in small and large paint. And then we also utilized our warranty repair system to look at some of the common issues that customers were experiencing with the amp and previous generations of Shocker so that we can make sure they were addressed on the era. So let's take a look at what some of those changes ended up being. So one of the first things people ask about when we launch a new marker is about the name. Where did it come from? In this case, the era. So the era actually came from one of our new members of our design team, Ryan Moorhead, sketched out what he thought uh, the new Shocker should look like, calling in uh, design cues from a lot of the previous generations of Shocker to get what you see here today. So you have the knurled back cap like you would have seen on the old shoebox. You have the Echo milled into the side like you did on the NXT. You have an overall smooth and simple body uh, like you did on the SFT. And then up towards the front, uh, we reference that new uh, knurled styling that came with the Freak starting this past season. So you have a nice redesign aesthetically that calls back to all the design cues of the entire Shocker era. On the topic of Freak XL, the Shocker era still utilizes the Freak XL insert system with that eight inch control bore in the back. However, last year we introduced the 15 inch All-American and that is now present on the era. What we did there was to redesign the porting and the internal bore to take advantage of some of the smaller paint that's available today, as well as reduce the amount of paint, water, and dirt intrusion that can happen uh, in your porting. Next, we addressed a lot of the ergonomic feedbacks that our customers asked us to take a look at. And starting right up front was our foregrip. Uh, first of all, we added texture and changed the formulation of the rubber for the front and rear grip, but we also went ahead and increased the front grip size by about 30%. We changed the internal milling features on the body to retain that grip, so it's also not going to twist or pull off as easy as previous generations, and it is very, very solid. The trigger itself has been modified to a deuce style trigger, so this is more traditional rather than the scythe trigger that you've seen on previous shockers. And we've also went ahead and repositioned the micro switch down lower uh, for some reasons that we'll cover a little bit later in the video. The ASA obviously is still that same styled knob, uh, but we have redesigned the internals of it. Now there's two O-rings in there that each have a ceiling surface as opposed to a single O-ring with, with two ceiling surfaces. So what that's going to do is it's going to keep that knob more secure once it's gassed up, and it's also going to reduce wear and maintenance. In addition to the ASA, you'll notice that even though the grip itself is the same height as the amp, the actual height of the marker has changed. There's approximately a quarter inch more space here between the base of the grip and the top of the ASA. Now the reason we've done that is because players now they're using JT goggles or EVS goggles or some other goggles that have a very flat eye line. Uh, they like to shoulder the marker and have it come up exactly in their sight picture. And by raising the height of the grip frame, it's just a more natural ergonomic fit for players that are using that flat bottom goggle lens. Internally, we have made a number of changes to the bolt system, dealing primarily with large paint, small paint, and brittle paint. So let's take a look at some of those changes now. To remove the bolt of the era, it's a simple quarter turn and pull, just like it was on the amp, and it comes straight out the back. We're going to go ahead and compare it against the amp core, again, just turning and pulling straight out the back, and there you have your amp core. Now, there will be some visual similarities and there's even some shared parts. So let's take a closer look at what makes each one of these cores unique and where the era has its advancements. So we've gone ahead and torn down both the bulk kits to 
to take a look at some of the similarities and differences in each individual component. On this side we have the amp and on this side we have the era. Starting in the back, we're going to take a look at the rear assembly for the amp and the rear assembly for the era. Aside from the size of the back cap and the color of the QEV, these are going to be largely identical. The QEV changes color because we've changed some tolerance as well as some production methods and the white just helps us separate the two parts internally in our assembly department. Next up is the shuttle. The shuttle on the amp is identifiable because it is black and has a off color spring. The era is light blue with a bright silver spring. Now the changes here are weight and flow. So we've made the era shuttle lighter and higher flow, which is going to enhance its mechanical performance, especially at high rates of fire. We've also increased the spring rate in the shuttle, which is going to help with consistency and efficiency in that mechanical mode. Electronically, the shuttle will make very little, if no perceivable difference. However, it does make a palatable difference in mechanical. Taking a look at the spools, you'll notice that the amp spool has significantly different O-rings on the head and the base in both size and distribution. The reason for this is we've done a re-timing of the core when individual things happen in an effort to be easier on brittle and cold paint. And this is where you're going to see some of those redesigns. Most notably at the top, you'll see that the tip of the spool shaft is significantly smaller on the amp versus the era which then takes us into our bolt guides. Now you notice the bolt guides are significantly different between the ERA and the AMP. The ERA integrates this new cone, which is actually an anti-rollback feature. It mates with our bolt and creates essentially a flat-faced bolt at rest. What's that going to do is advance the paintball slightly forward in the chamber, which again is dealing with that smaller paint that is more common these days. The next change you're going to see is in the bolt itself. Now you'll notice the amp bolt is physically shorter and as well as missing this air skirt which you see on the air bolt. The air bolt integrates this air skirt which does two things. First of all, it slows down the delivery of the air to the ball so it's going to be easier on brittle paint. It's also going to soften the sound signature slightly. So you're going to have very similar decibel readings between the two markers but the air is going to have much less of a pop in its shot than the amp. Up front we have the bolt caps. The era obviously is blue, the amp is black. The main changes here have to do with flow control. Now you'll notice that the amp does have a O-ring here that floats on the chamber, which does restrict flow. However, the ERA integrates two different O-ring grooves, uh, which represent two different settings. Now, if you have a player that has a tendency not to clean their equipment, or if you're playing in extremely dirty or extremely cold conditions, you can go ahead and move that O-ring back to its second position, which is gonna increase your airflow to your firing chamber by about 80%. The reason for that is it's going to break stiction easier, so in extreme cold, it's going to break away from a stop better. And in the instance where you have a player who doesn't take care of their equipment, the lack of lubrication also causes stiction and this increase in flow will fight that. Finally, let's take a look at the firing chambers. They are identical between the markers. Uh, it just simply holds air. They do thread in both ways. So you have those two parts in common. So moving on, let's take a look at some of the feedback uh, driven changes on the era that have enhanced the reliability. As I mentioned previous in the video, a lot of the changes in the era were driven by player feedback. And there's nothing more important to a player than reliability. So we took a look at our warranty repair system and addressed the outstanding issues that we could do on this new model. And we noticed the number one reason that players were bringing their marker back to us in events 
or sending it in had the common denominator of Loctite. Now Loctite is a thread locker that's used to take a threaded component like an airport, thread it into the body and then make it airtight. The drawback to Loctite is that around 110 degrees Fahrenheit, it starts to break down. So players that were down in Florida, Texas, Southern California, if they left their markers in the car too long and then immediately gas it up after taking it out, you could damage or even break the Loctite, which would cause a leak. So in the era, we eliminated all of the Loctite. There is a port between the frame and body and between the body and frame, which utilize our brand new air transfer system, essentially a stainless steel floating tube that goes between the body and frame and frame and ASA, which actually can float so that your frame or ASA can be perceivably loose and it still won't leak any air. So you have the advantage of eliminating the Loctite as well as making your marker airtight even if the frame is loose, even if the ASA is loose. So that's a distinct advantage here with the Era. In addition to changing the air ports themselves, we've actually gone ahead and framed in the trigger frame itself. You notice the body now shrouds the frame and that does a couple things. First of all, it protects the electronic connections that are in there with your eyes and your solenoid. And then it also allows easier frame alignment when installing your frame, uh, going from electronic to mechanical, or if you've taken it apart just for service. Leaving no stone unturned when developing a new marker is key. So even though the electronic system in the previous shockers was incredibly reliable, we took a look at what could be improved. Now water resistance, dust resistance, shock resistance, and then even battery life have been outstanding with the shocker platform. So what we did was to examine our warranty records one more time to see why exactly and if exactly any customers were having issues with their boards. And what we actually found was that the number one reason for board damage had nothing to do with water, dirt, or paint, and everything to do with how the trigger was adjusted. Players would adjust the trigger improperly, allowing the trigger to come back and damage the micro switch that was on the board. So what we did was reposition the micro switch down further, putting a longer lever, and machining a wall into the grip frame, which protects the micro switch. The knock-on effect of this is a much more lively trigger than previous generations. So for those of you that enjoy semi-auto or just didn't particularly care for the previous generation of shocker trigger, you'll find that the new era has a completely different feel in addition to outstanding reliability. And there you have it, the shocker era. While the amp was a quantitative improvement by the numbers better than every previous shocker, the era is a qualitative improvement Utilizing three years of player feedback on the amp from all levels of play, from professional down to amateur, to get what we feel is the most refined, best shooting shocker we've ever created. Check one out now. Make it your era.